Hello again, brethren. This, uh, this video, I'm going to be answering a question I was asked. The question was, what's the difference between Yahweh and Jehovah? First of all, go to Psalm 139. Psalm 139, in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Not Proverbs, Brad, come on. Psalm 139. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, Psalm 138. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Psalm 138. Psalm 138, not 139. Beg your pardon. Psalm 138. Verses 1 and 2. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods, little g, will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple, and today we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that Spirit, God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Singular. One name. One name. Now, for those playing the home game, those of you uh, King James Scripture believing Church of the Living God, um, you know that Yahweh does not appear in the King James Scriptures, the authorized version of the Scriptures. You know that. But Jehovah does. And there are some that will say that Jehovah is a Greek rendering of Yahweh. <laughs> no, no. But for this, <clears throat> turn in your King James Scriptures right now. If I said Bible by accident, please forgive me. I'm working, working on that. Turn in your King James Scriptures, the true and real Scriptures, to Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now, while I first mentioned, this is where Lord comes in. Okay? Now, you see this? Yeah, I got it from the Trinitarian Bible Society. This is the, That's the only place I could get it. See, this has the Hebrew text and the Greek text, okay? Now, God appears right here in Genesis chapter 1. God. In the beginning, God, okay? But Lord first appears here in Genesis chapter 4, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, okay? Now, in this... I want to show you this. I want to show you this, okay? Brother Unashamed Workman, you watching me? Um, he will be able to shed some pretty good light on this, okay? Now, this is a Textus Receptus. Uh, this is, um, I forget, this is the, the Bloomberg version of the Textus Receptus. There are many renditions of the Textus Receptus, so you know. But I want to show you something, 
Okay? Now, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, now when you read Hebrew, it's backwards to us. They go from right to left, as where we who read English, we read left to right. Okay? Same way it is with the, um, the Hebrew scriptures. Okay? That's why in this one it has the Greek, and you would read the Greek from left to right. But in this one, Genesis is on the back page to us, and you go from right to left. But <clears throat> right here, where you see my finger, right here, okay, do you see this? All right. This, they tell you, according to Strong's, <laughs> don't get me started on that. They tell you that this, according to Strong's, is Yahweh, okay? N-I-N-I. -N -I. I know that's not what it is, but see, get really close into that, okay? And this right here is supposed to be Lord, okay? Here, see this? This is supposed to be Lord, and this is what they claim is Yahweh. Okay, see? See that? Now, according to Strong's, <laughs> yeah, um, this is Yahweh, and this one here is Elohim. Okay? Elohim, or something like that. Okay? But the problem is, this is the perfect, preserved, given by inspiration word of God, the King James Scriptures, the true and real Scriptures. Yahweh does not appear, but God does. Now, very interesting about this, there's something called the Tetranomicon. If I'm mispronouncing that, beg your pardon. That is the four consonants that supposedly make up the name of God. Y-H-W-H. I've also seen it variated from Y-H-V-H. -H, okay? And that is supposed to be Yod-Ve-Hud-Ve. Which they say shorten it to mean Yahweh. Okay? Now, I have seen modern Bible, beg your pardon, translations put the word Yahweh in there. For example, Holman Christian Standard Bible did that, the, the first run of it, put Yahweh in there. I got rid of that thing because it was just, just, get, just get rid of it, okay? Here's something interesting. The name Yahweh, number one, Personally, now, I'm going to give you some life experience here. I've had a lot of experience on witnessing onto the Jewish people. Quite a bit. I have yet to hear personally, personally, a Jewish man or woman, a rabbi or whom have you, refer to the Lord as Yahweh. Okay? Most of the Jewish people will refer to God as Hashem. What is Hashem? The name. Hashem means the name. Okay? And also, too, a lot of the writing of the Jewish people, who are not of the Church of the Living God, won't even spell out God. They'll omit the O and put a hyphen in there. Okay? And I have yet today to hear one Jewish man or woman or rabbi refer to the Lord as Yahweh. Now, some of you might have heard of it or seen it, don't know, but uh, especially they of the Hasidim, which is the ultra-Orthodox, they don't, they refer to him as Hashem. And Lord, a lot of the times they will say Adonai, okay? And Adonai Zedek, is in the scriptures, okay? Lord or king, okay? 
So that's one problem there. Okay. Now, whether or not Yahweh is something else other than Jehovah, to be honest with you, I don't really know. But this I do know. Like I said, <clears throat> I have not come across a Jewish man, woman, or rabbi to utter Yahweh. It's either Hashem or Adonai that they use. Okay? That's very significant. That's very significant. But Jehovah is in the scriptures. Now see, this thing here, the Texas Receptus, the received text with the, uh, what is this called? The Masoretic text of the Hebrew and the Texas Receptus of the Greek, okay? These were stepping stones to arrive at the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God, the King James Scriptures, the true and re uh, real Scriptures, the authorized version of the Scriptures, okay? Uh, to my last uh, looking into, there are 19 editions of the Textus Receptus. Yeah. And there are, what, 29 now of the Nesolalan, right? Right? So, right there, that ought to tell you something. I know of people who say they are Christians and are Textus Receptus only. And there are like 19 editions of the Textus Receptus. And the Textus Receptus line um, can be traced back to Syria, where they were first called Christians, where they, Acts 11, 26, okay, they were first called Christians. They weren't calling themselves that. Very important to note, okay? But there again, when it comes to the Jewish people, they do not utter the name Yahweh. None that I have ever run into. If you have, fine. I personally haven't, and I've had quite a bit of experience with the Jewish people. Quite a bit. Okay? Quite a bit. All right? But, Jehovah. Jehovah, the name Jesus, Jehovah saves, okay? Jehovah appears seven times in the scriptures, okay? And incidentally, according to the bozos of the, uh, uh, the Jehos, okay? And their, um, uh, the, hold on one second, I'm good. The Jehos in their interlinear here, see that? Which is based off of Westcott and Hort, warning, they like to put Jehovah in the New Testament. Jehovah does not appear in the New Testament. In the New Testament, Jesus, Jehovah saves. Jesus appears in the New Testament <laughs> as far as the name, okay? Jesus Christ is God the Father. Absolutely. But, <clears throat> when it comes to what's the difference, there is only one name that we need to be concerned with today. But you believe the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures. Is Yahweh in this? Is Yahweh in the scriptures in English? And this is the and this is what you use. You use the King James scriptures to translate into other languages. You don't go never mind this. You don't go to this. This brought us this. This is it. Okay. Yahweh is not in here. Jehovah is. So off the bat, 
Never mind Yahweh. Stay away from it. Run into problems. Okay? But let's look at Jehovah. Okay? Go to Genesis chapter 22, verse 14. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 22, verse 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. In the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Jehovah Jireh. Uh, I believe that is translated um, Jehovah provides. Or I mean, that, I think that's what that means. Jehovah provides. Because there was a ram caught in the thicket. Okay? So the Lord gave a ram to uh, sacrifice instead of Isaac. Okay? So the Lord provided that. Jehovah Jireh, okay, the scripture defines itself, okay? Exodus chapter 6. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. Now for this, let's read verses 1 on to verse 3. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses, and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, but uh, by the name of God Almighty, but by my name Jehovah, was I not known to them? It's Jehovah. Now, someone like to argue and say, "Well, that's actually at uh, that's actually Yahweh." What is God's hand on? The authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. You believe this book is perfect, right? Right? Not your head. Uh, even those of you fakes out there, you Jesuit coadjutors, you have to pretend at least to say that this is perfect. You have to pretend in order to keep up appearances. <laughs> but <clears throat> it's Jehovah. It is Jehovah. Okay? Also in Exodus 17, 15, 1715 1715 and Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisai for he said because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation Jehovah Nisai. Now, looking at the text here, Jehovah Nisai, Nisai, that the Lord will have war. Our God, our Lord, our Father Jesus Christ is a man of war. He came as the Lamb to be an offering for sin. His blood shed on the cross. But as we know, in the book of Revelation, when he come back, yeah, yeah, he's going to be a man of war. He's going to be ruling and reigning as king in Jerusalem. Okay? Now, <clears throat> Judges chapter 6. We're obviously looking at all the references of Jehovah. Okay? <clears throat> Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, verse 24. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. One second, brethren. I, I think I messed that up. 
Yes, I did. One second, brother. No, I had it right. I was in Joshua. <laughs> I was looking, like, wait a second, wait a second. <coughs> okay. <laughs> ah, yeah. Judges, chapter 6, verse 24. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord, and called it Jehovah Shalom. And unto this day it is yet in Ophrah of the Abizarites. And of course, Shalom, Salem, peace. Jehovah, peace. So we have seen Jehovah Nisai, he's a God of war. Okay? We also have seen in Exodus or in Genesis 24. Okay? Uh, Genesis 22, verse 14. Okay? Jehovah Jireh. God provides. Okay? And then he says in Exodus chapter 6, verse 3, by my name, Jehovah. And then in Exodus 17, in Exodus 17, verse 15, and Moses built an altar and called his and called the name of it Jehovah Nisai, God of War, a Lord of War. Our God is a God of War. Okay, and then in Judges here, he is also Jehovah Shalom, God of Peace, provision. Peace and war. That's very interesting, isn't it? Now go to Psalm 83. Psalm 83. <clears throat> Psalm 83, verse 18. That men may know that thou, whose name alone, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. Jehovah saves Jesus. Okay? Okay? Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 12. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. The name Jesus, again, Jehovah saves. Okay? Watch this. Let's read verses 1 and 2. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me. Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. And you saw that by, but by my name Jehovah have I not been known. He was known by God Almighty unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jehovah, okay, Jehovah, and Isaiah 26, verse 4, trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. So, okay, now, let's run this down. Here, Isaiah 26, verse 4. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Strength, okay? Isaiah 12, we're, we're working backwards on this now, okay? Isaiah 12, verse 2. 
Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Strength, song, and salvation. Okay, and now... In Psalm 83, verse 18, that men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah art the most high over all the earth. The most high over all the earth. Okay? Judges, <laughs> Judges, chapter 6, verse 24. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord, and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet an Ophrah of the Abizarites. Jehovah Shalom, peace, strength, song, salvation, peace. Exodus 17. Exodus 17, verse 15, not 16, Brad. And Moses built there, built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisai, war, Jehovah war. Strength, song, salvation, Peace, war, Exodus chapter 6, verse 3, And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but by my name Jehovah was I not known, by my name Jehovah. And, of course, Genesis 22, verse 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Provides. Strength, song, salvation. Uh, what was it? Peace, by his name Jehovah, war and provision. By his name. One name. Jesus is Jehovah saves. Okay? Now, go now to Leviticus. Go now to Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 23, we will be reading verses 23 under verse 32, okay? Verses 23 under verse 32, okay? Leviticus 23, verses 23 under verse 22. Ah. Uh, you know what, instead of 23, let's go on from um, 26 under verse 32, okay? The Day of Atonement, okay? The Day of Atonement. Now, the priest under the law, once in a year, would go behind the veil, okay? And they say that, um, now this is not found in the scriptures, but it was there where they would pronounce the name. The name. Okay? But I want to read this to you. Verses 27 on to verse 32. Uh, verses 24 on to verse 26 are, that is, the trumpets, which is Yom Teruah, Truah, Yom Truah, trumpets. Okay, 
This is the Day of Atonement that we're looking at called Yom Kippur. Okay? 27 on the verse 32. Also on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Note the significance of that soul. Okay? Note that. And be cut off from among his people. Salvation is of the Jews. Okay? Under the law, you had to. You had to. Keep the Day of Atonement. Let's continue. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. See, back in this dispensation, okay, body and soul, okay, body and soul. There was not the circumcision made without hands, okay? Because you were not eternally secure during this dispensation, okay? But the circumcision made with ha without hands divided that, okay? Because if you were to touch something, it would defile your soul under the Old Testament because the circumcision made without hands wasn't there yet, okay? It was not there yet. Christ Jesus had yet to die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures. So, see, there was not that division between soul and body. Okay? That's why there were so many restrictions. Okay? And that's why it says soul there specifically. And being cut off and destroyed. Okay? It wasn't faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. That is nonsensical. Easily disproved. Okay? Easily. Easily. Don't ever fall for that. But, verse 31. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. From even unto even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. Okay? Now go to Numbers 29. Numbers 29. Verses 7 unto verse 11. <clears throat> now, giving a rundown of the Day of Atonement again. Okay? This is significant. This is significant. Stay with me. And ye shall have on the tenth day of this seventh month an holy convocation, and ye shall afflict your souls. Ye shall not do any work therein, but ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord for a sweet savor, one young bullock, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled, mingled with oil, Three tenth deals to a bullock, and two tenth deals to one ram. A several tenth deal for one lamb throughout the seven lambs. One kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the sin offering of atonement, and the continual burnt offering, and the meat offering of it, and their drink offerings. Now on the day of atonement, the priest alone would go in there, okay, to make an atonement for the children of Israel. The Jewish people will tell you that it was then that the high priest, only by revelation, would utter the name, Hashem. Okay? The Jewish people don't allude even to Yahweh. Okay? Yahweh. Do they to Jehovah? I do not know. 
I do not know. But they will say Adonai instead of Lord, and they will say Hashem, the name, instead of actually saying the name. And a lot of them will take out the O, will omit the O in God and put a hyphen. Okay? So in my experience, the Jewish people do not use Yahweh. In my experience, okay? But now go to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. We're going to read verses 1 on to verse 10. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 10. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first, wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shewbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the, after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant. And over it the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot, cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. Now see, right there, it says nothing about the priest uttering the name. Okay, but there are Jewish people who will tell you when it comes to Yom Kippur. This, he's talking about Yom Kippur here, the Day of Atonement. Okay, Day of Atonement. Okay, once a year, the priest will go in there to make an atonement for the people. And what does it say? But into the second went the high priest alone. And the Jewish people from the Hasidim and many others will say that it is when they the high priest went in there that the name was revealed to him that they uttered the name of God once a year and only the high priest himself. Where is that in the text? It's not there, is it? It's not there, is it? Is it? Can you see it? Let's continue. The Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as, pertain as pertaining to the conscience which stood only, I have that circled, in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of Reformation. It's not talking about Calvin or Luther or any of those things. No. Time of Reformation. So see, we read that because you look into this thing of the Yahweh or Yodvei Chodvei, okay? of the Tetranomicon or whatever. You will find tracings back to modern Judaism, which is based upon the Kabbalah, not upon the scriptures, loosely based uh, upon the scriptures, loosely, very loose, okay? Uh, modern Judaism is Kabbalistic, and they, their main document is the Talmud, okay? is the Talmud. But you will hear some say that it's when they go into the veil, the high priest, that the name Hashem is given to them, and whatever that name is. they, The Jewish people say to themselves, they don't even know and they don't think it's right to know the name of God, right? Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Again, I have not heard a Jewish man, woman, or rabbi make mention of the name Jehovah. 
I've actually heard it said that Jehovah is a pagan Greek thing. <laughs> Go to Acts chapter 4. Go to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse 12. Acts chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse 12. Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, Jesus, Jehovah saves, God the Father. Okay, Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse 11. Whoa, whoa, Brad, whoa, whoa. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 on to 11. Which I read in the previous video, and I said I was going to do this in this video. But, I'm going to do it again. Philippians 2, verses 9 on to verse 11. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. One name, because there's only one God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. One name. For one God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Okay? You don't have him saying uh, Jehovah or Yahweh. And then Yeshua. And then the name of the, no, of the Holy Ghost. No, no, no. There's one name. Jesus Christ, God the Father. Okay? John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verses 14 on to verse 18. John chapter 10, verses 14 on to verse 18. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. <laughs> Pretty simple, isn't this? Let's continue. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life that I might take it up again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father, the soul of Godhead. Okay? I have received power. This commandment I received from my Father, his soul, not the Father. We don't have to read out of John 14 again, do we? You, you, you're getting this pretty well by now, aren't you, right? Okay, now go to John chapter 8, verses 19 on to verse 24. John chapter 8, verses 19 on to verse 24. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. 
Jesus is the Father. Because the soul of the Godhead, spirit, soul, and body, is the Father. You saw Jesus. You knew Jesus. You know Jesus. You know the Father. Oh, I ain't letting this go. No. Let's continue. These words spake Jesus in the treasury, as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. Now, I want to hold on a second. <laughs> we looked up Jehovah. Okay. Was it song? Salvation? Um, what was it? Praise, song, salvation? I, I forget. <laughs> Thank your pardon, even though we just looked at it. Okay. But Jesus, Jehovah saves. Okay. All that we looked at within the context of the name Jehovah is fulfilled in Jesus Christ, God the Father. Okay? Now, Brother Brian Denlinger, in his second video of the Trinity Exposed, read this verse here that we're going to get up to and stated the obvious. And in him doing that, it uh, just broke a lot of things open. Broke a lot of things open. A lot of fakes were uncovered, okay? And a lot of heretics as well. And I am going to read this with you. We are going to read this together. And I'm going to make my stand as well. Verse 23 on to verse 24. And he said unto them, Oh, well, let's read 22 again. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come? And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, That ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. If ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. So Jesus is not the Father, huh? For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. What is it? The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Father. The Holy Ghost is not the Son or whatever it is. I don't know. I don't care. Do you believe Jesus Christ is the Father? No? Oh, he's number two of the Babylonian, Egyptian, Pagan, Roman Catholic Trinity. He's, num he, he's number two. The one in the middle died for me. Some of you might, uh, who are a little aware of the uh, Jewish traditions, might be aware of the Afikomen, right? The three-pocketed thing uh, where they hide the matzah and they break the one in the middle. Right? Yeah. And modern Judaism is not based upon Scripture. Yeah, you might be aware of that, right? Yeah, yeah. And again, Jewish people do not believe in the Trinity. There, there might be some out there that do, but <laughs> you're going to have a really hard time trying to convince the Jewish people that the one God is one God of three persons. 
<laughs> Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Yeah, have fun storming the castle. Okay? But it says here, verse 24, I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. But wait, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 41 again. We're going to this again. Okay? Isaiah chapter 41. Okay, these, I'm, we're just going to hit one more verse references, okay? In the John 15 um, expositor, expository study video, we get into this in more depth. But we're hitting it again, okay? Isaiah 41, verse 4. Isaiah 41, verse 4. Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, the first, and with the last, I am He. I am He. Okay? Revelation now, chapter 1. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not the concordance, Brad. Revelation chapter 1. Oh, come on, work with me, fingers. Work with me. Come on. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. It may be in red words in your version of the authorized scriptures. Here, let, let, let me show you. See, in my Cambridge. There are no red words in the book of Revelation in the Cambridge edition that I have. And most of them they are not. But, Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. And, oh, 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 oh. Revelation chapter 22, verse 13, again, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end, the first and the last. Incidentally, their friends, uh, especially in the book of John, especially in the book of John, when you when you see our Lord and Father Jesus Christ, our God, when you see him saying the I am's, you ought to circle them. Just a little thing, just a little advice, but I am, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The first and the last. This makes nothing of essence, nature, uh, substance. One God. One God. Not three persons that make one God. Shh. Isaiah 41 again, verse 4. Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning, I the Lord, the first, and with the last, I am he. Isaiah 43, verse 10. Isaiah 43, verse 10. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God form, neither shall there be after me. We got to read verse 11 too. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. And Isaiah 52, verse 6. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. And of course, this leads into Isaiah 53, talking about Jesus Christ, the suffering servant, son of God, referencing to the flesh, 
Okay. Uh, Brother Jeff Jones asked me uh, about that, and uh, Brother Stephen Woodruff. That's why I didn't answer you, Brother Jeff, because he he answered for me. Praise him. Uh, thank you, uh, Brother Stephen. Thank you. Thank you for that. But now, go back to John chapter 8. Okay, John chapter 8. I am he. I am he. Okay, John chapter 8, verse 24. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. And let's look at verse 28. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. As my Father, the soul, the Godhead, has taught me. If your Savior is not God the Father, look at me. If your Savior is not God the Father, are you saved? Jehovah saves one God, not one God of three persons. This, this is what got Brother Brian in trouble with the Christians and set off uh, everybody's favorite YouTube uh, Jesuit with the whole like, <laughs> like, uh, what was it? Over 500 back-to-back -back videos, something like that, against them. Okay? Yeah. If your Savior is not God the Father, are you saved? Because he says right here, For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. What? Is Jesus a lesser? Oh no, he's one in essence with the Father. That's Catholic. That's Catholic. It's not scripture. It's not scripture. Sorry, friends. It's not scripture. And I have here. I, I have something. Oh, and one more about I am he. John 13, verse 19. John 13, verse 19. Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Brother, uh, who asked me this question, um, the difference between Yahweh and Jehovah, Yahweh is not in the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, real scriptures. Jehovah is. Okay? That's the big difference. These, This stuff is good for reference, that kind of stuff like that. But, again, is this the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God? The King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures? Is this, is this it? Yes, yes. Even, hey, Hey, even you Jesuit coadjutors and fakes out there who claim to be KJV Christians, <laughs> you have to at least admit to keep up your little facade that this is perfect, right? You do. Okay, so we have that established. You do not see Yahweh in here. You see Jehovah. So right there. 
and also let's let's refresh our memories okay uh, Acts chapter 4 again Acts chapter 4 come on work with me fingers work with me fingers Acts chapter 4 verses 10 on to verse 12 be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which is set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among, given among men, whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ. Jehovah saves. Jesus. Not Yehoshua. Yahashua. Okay? If you're Jewish, Yiddish, truly saved of the body of Christ, the church of the living God, you want to say Yeshua? You're Jewish? Okay, but Philippians, Philippians, okay? And, and I but, you you start naming the name of Jesus Christ in a synagogue sometime. You'll see how polite they will be after the second, third, fourth, fifth, eighth, tenth time you mention the name of Jesus Christ. You'll see how polite <laughs> they remain. I, 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 you yourself, you have to remain polite because you are his witness. Okay? But um, it's in the Philippians chapter 2. Verses 9 on to verse 11. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. One name. So, so, let me put it to you like this. The Jehovah of the Old Testament is the Jesus Christ of the New Testament. What does that mean? The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament, which is one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Okay? Don't mess around with the Yahweh thing. Someone comes around, it's like, well, the, the Hebrew says, or the, uh, the Greek says. What Greek are you talking about? Nestle Alon, okay, which number? What Greek are you talking about? The Texas Receptus. Uh, what number are you talking about? What are you talking about? Well, you know, there's a, a 18, what is it, 1819, can't remember, um, editions of the, uh, sorry, <laughs> Texas Receptus. There's 29 of the Nestle Alon. There's at least four or five of the U.S. Uh, United Bible Science, uh, UBS, which is in Chicago, by the way. <laughs> you, you pass it on the train to Chicago. But yeah. What number? No, no, see, all that stuff was stepping stones to arrive right here. This is it. Now, to the brother who asked me that question, I know you, I know you believe that. I know you do. This is the book, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. So you don't need to mess around with the Yahweh thing. If someone comes to you spouting the Greek and the Hebrew, it's like this I believe this perfect word of God, King James Scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Well, there's an error that no, 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 no. If God wanted uh to be known as Yahweh, he would have put it in here. Jehovah's in here. But there's only one name given among men whereby we must be saved. 
That's Jesus Christ, God our Father. And if God the Father doesn't save you, are you saved? Because if you don't believe he, that I am He, like Jesus Himself said, if you don't believe that Jesus is God the Father, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, I'm saying it. And I know that's going to make a lot of you angry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have told all of you, I, the Trinity thing, <coughs> my enemies are going to love this. There. I want nothing to do with that. And look, you're not going to get me to change my mind. <laughs> Absolutely not. And uh, incidentally, too, you don't see me going to people who are Trinitarians and um, trying to convert them. That's for the Lord to do. They come here asking questions and stuff, that's fine. But, um, like I've said before, I can't agree to disagree on this. This is going to be an issue, and it will. Then sadly, for those of us who are believe in the scriptural Godhead, and those of you who believe in the pagan trinity, No harm, no foul. It's the way it's got to be. Because I ain't, uh, I ain't, uh, you ain't going ain't gonna to sway me to believe otherwise. And it's not my job to persuade you otherwise. The Lord will reveal it to you. And if you're going to sit there and say that the Lord revealed to you that he's a God, one God of three persons, you're a liar. You're a liar. God didn't show you that. No. Roman Catholicism showed you that. And you got the baggage. Like uh, Brother Brian put that one video about how um, that one wacko guy, what's his name? Um, uh, the purpose driven life guy. Oh, what is, uh, Warren. How he said, we all believe in the Trinity. No, we don't. No, we don't. Anyway, brethren, that's going to be it for this video. I got one more video, which is going to be a little on the shorter side. Uh, but then, and this uh, last video I'm going to be doing is something that's just, I've heard it now enough times. It's just really, really getting on my nerves. So I, I got to, got to do something, a uh, quick video on it. So I love you, my brethren. And like, again, uh, like I said, I know that what uh, we've looked at uh, will offend some of you. And I'm sorry. Here I stand. And you ain't moving me. So. I love you. I'll see you guys in the next video.